Hey, it's Don, the auction professor. Today, we're going to give you another bolo, something you should always be looking for, something everybody throws away. It's old packs of cigarettes, empty. You're going to see what I'm talking about in just a second as we hop over to the screen now. So before we get into cigarette packs, I just want to stress this fact. If you are trying to sell a cigarette pack that has cigarettes still in it, you have to have a license. It does not matter if the cigarettes are 100 years old, 10 years old, or what. There is still tobacco in them, and you still are required by federal law to have a license to sell those. So I empty every single thing that I get if there are cigarettes in it regardless. Even if it's going to hurt the value a little bit, the only other option you can have is if you can have somebody else sell it for you who has a license. Again, there may be some issues with that, so I sell everything empty regardless of any other fact. Only way to sell it, you don't want to get yourself in trouble. But on the other side, these empty boxes in many cases can go for a heck of a lot of money for something most people throw away. I found empty vintage packs of cigarettes in old garages, estate sales, garage sales, church sales. I've even found them in garbage bins and garages that have been abandoned 30, 40 years ago. It's something that could show up, just like tin cans, bottles, and things like that. This is all in that line of disposable items that most people think doesn't carry a value, so they just discard them for the most part. Now, I pick up stuff like this. This is a puzzle pack set. You had to get each one of these to actually put this together. And it makes a giant visual cigarette box, basically. You had to collect all four. Some of them were limited. $304. This has four bids, so it's not just some random oddball thing. Most of these kinds of things sell because of the age. People like to collect things that they can put together to have a general store in their basement, their garage, an outbuilding, whatever the case may be, a man cave, for example. There are people that just collect these sorts of things. Now, here is a wrapper around a box. This would have been wrapped around a pack of cigarettes. This is the outer wrapper with the foil or whatever the case may be on the inside. It has the tax stamp. You can date this by the stamp. 150 bucks. Most, again, these are things that most people would discard. I sometimes can find these in stamp collections with the stamps on them. That's just an area that you can turn these up. But the most common place to find these are in old garages, barns, estate sales in the attic, and stuff like that. Basements are usually fairly good. Now here's an earlier one. Don't expect to find these. I run into stuff from this age very rarely, but they do show up occasionally. Most people don't think much of them, so they pass them by. At least that's my personal experience. This one went for $127 with five bids. Legitimate sales. All of these, again, empty packs of cigarettes, just the cardboard box. Some of these earlier styles like this can go for some incredible money, even up into the 1910-20s era, because there were baseball cards in some of these packs of cigarettes, including possibility of Ty Cobb and things like that in some of the earlier ones. Really nice one here. Now, this next one's a Lucky Strike Green. This is a vintage one, something that does not show up, something that most collectors are going to want if they collect Lucky Strike items. There are diehard smoking collecting fans that just collect anything from a specific brand of cigarettes. Nothing wrong with that if that's what their hobby is. Interesting, unique items. I love vintage anyway, so I do find things like this. I have shown you packs that I've found in halls as well. $100, three bids, interesting item, as I said. Just know the rules, as I said on this, before you do any sales on anything with cigarettes in it. Now, here's a 1954 red Marlboro pack, empty again. Now, this does look very similar to the modern-day ones. There are differences, as I said. You'll see some factory markings on the bottom, as well as possibly a tax stamp to dictate the age on these. These are almost always datable by some factor that's on the box itself. Another Lucky Strike Green. Now, there's different series, and you can see they've got Pack 106 or 112. Just an interesting example, 100 bucks basically on this one as well. Now, here's a promo one or a maybe a C-ration would be my gathering. This is a small size. One thing you'll realize when you find some of these earlier ones that they're a lot smaller and thinner. Usually there's five cigarettes, maybe ten in some of them. This is a five-pack marked not for sale. So I would gather this might be a military sea ration from the Korean War era, something that would have been given out to soldiers possibly overseas. That's usually what I see with this sort of thing. $95 on this one. 
Now here's just some empty wrappers, just a mix match. They have quite a few different lots. They've sold one, they've got several more. $89 is what they took out of one of these lots. So rather good price on something like this. They're just vintage empty wrappers from the 70s. Nothing fancy. These are disposable, as I said. So that's why these are still worth something. Anything that would have just been thrown away back in the day, wherever it's from, they do carry some value to some people. People collect the advertising label aspects of these. So really interesting, in my opinion, to run across a group like this. Old pack here. Now you can see the size very readily um, from the person holding it. They're very small packs, as I said, five or 10 cigarettes per pack. Major known companies, Morton from Lynchburg VA, $89 on this one as well. The Swell. Now you can find trade cards, advertising envelopes, sometimes even poster stamps for all of these same kinds of brands going back to the same time frame. So rather interesting. Viceroy, well-known brand for those of you who are into vintage items. I see advertising from Viceroy as well. This one's sealed filter tip. I would probably say 40s, 50s maybe, just by looking at the edge of the stamp up there, somewhere maybe in that range. $85 on this one. Crest Cigarettes, another early brand, 30s, 40s, maybe in the late 50s on this one. Now, I'm not a pro in this area, but I know to grab these up. I do know some that are worth money. Major brands almost always are worth more. So just look for like Lucky Strikes or something like that. Early Marlboro goes for some very good money also. This is just a nice example at $65. These, again, are all sold prices. Now, this next one's pretty well beat up. It's dirty, it's stained, the whole works, but it's got a Art Deco racing car. This would probably date to the 1930s or 40s, I would gather. $51 in nine bids. You're not going to make a fortune. You're not going to retire. There are some packs, though, that will sell for thousands of dollars, especially early packs that could still have cards in them of maybe a famous baseball player. Ty Cobb would be a very good example of that. Now, here's a lot of empty wrappers from Sebring. Brand names sometimes could surprise you on this. This is basically a markdown brand, if I, I do remember right on these. Probably late 60s, 70s era. $51, eight bids, just early wrappers. Nothing special, no cigarettes attached to them again. I don't mess with anything with cigarettes in them, as I said. Now here's another one. This is some packs of Newports. I don't know this variety, so maybe it's something that's been long since discontinued. $47, still a good sale either way. So. You just got to be looking out for stuff like this. And the last one is a sea ration, probably Vietnam War era. Empty five pack. There would have been five cigarettes in this. It would have been handed out possibly to soldiers overseas serving in the military. This is something possibly you could have got at the PX as well too while you were in the military. So just an interesting area. 40 bucks for this one. The thin ones are usually what I look for. It's small size. They don't have the filters. They're short. All of that is deciding factors on value on some of these. Again, these are things that almost everybody I know throws out. They think there is no value in an empty pack of cigarettes. But I assure you, any of the vintage ones, even 80s and before, still sell. There's not a lot of stuff like this that sells for decent money from the 90s and before that's junk like this. So you just got to be on the lookout for it. It could be anywhere. It could be sitting on a workbench that's been there for 50 years, 20 years, 30 years, in the attic. Somebody set them down. These are all areas that I find these sorts of things at. And again, I have shown them in many of my videos. I do not care that they're dirty or dingy. I will still take a shot. Usually I can get them for free at many of these sales. Again, because the people running the sales just think it's garbage and junk. Tell them what you want, but most of the time you can get these for almost nothing, if not nothing. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.